Praise the Lord. Okay, hi everybody. This is Pastor Warren Cook from Friendship Church. Of course, you know that by now, probably. And um, we're reading the Bible together. Today we're going to read Psalms 109, then we'll get into Ezekiel, and then, wow, what a great day this is. We're going to start the book of Romans today. So, uh, golly, that's just an amazing opportunity. Of course, we just finished the book of Acts, which is fabulous, and now we're going to get into the book of Romans, which is equally fabulous. They're all great, but I just, I don't know, I just, that's something special. Special of the special. So let's go ahead and get into Psalms 109. It says, For the choir director, a psalm of David, O God, whom I praise, don't stand silent and aloof, while the wicked slander me and tell lies about me. They surround me with hateful words and fight against me for no reason. I love them, but they try to destroy me with accusations, even as I'm praying for them. They repay evil for good and hatred for my love. Now, of course, this sounds, uh, apparently this is what they did to David, the king, but it also sounds like what they did to Jesus. And Jesus said, don't be surprised if they hate you because they hated me first. So that happens to us at times too. They repay evil for our good and hatred for our love. They say, get an evil person to turn against him. Send an accuser to bring him to trial. When his case comes up for judgment, let him be pronounced guilty. Count his prayers even as sins. Let his years be few. Let someone else take his position. Now, this verse is actually quoted by the apostles in the book of Acts when they decide it's time to replace Judas, who fell, uh, the one that uh, rejected Jesus and um, betrayed Jesus. They quoted this psalm right here, Psalm 109, verse 8. Let his years be few. Let someone else take his position. And so a lot of times we can look at the scriptures in the Old Testament, especially and see that they have multiple applications. There's the person who's writing it, and a lot of times they're writing it about their own condition, their own particular situation. And then sometimes the Holy Spirit hides gems in that, in that it's also applicable uh, prophetically for later times. And then sometimes it's almost like there's a little gem in, in there hidden, like this verse, that we would normally see it even as a prophecy, but the apostles saw it. The Holy Spirit pointed this verse out to them that this applied to their situation. Let his years be few. Let someone else take his position. May his children become fatherless and his wife a widow. May his children wander like beggars. May they be driven from their ruined homes. Now, by the way, we don't pray this way today, do we? Jesus said to love even your enemies. And yet it was very natural in the flesh, the natural man, to pray, God, destroy my enemies. And I think the Lord might forgive us even sometimes. Maybe you're in a really horrific situation. Maybe, you know, the Jews are uh, being thrown into the into the furnace by the Germans. I don't think God would fault you for praying for the Lord to strike the, the Nazi army down and, and deliver the Jews. But a lot of times the things that come against us are not that big. Maybe somebody cuts us off in the freeway. We don't need to pray, God, strike that person. May they end up in a ditch or end up in a hospital. Or somebody maybe takes credit for something at work that we did the work on. And we don't need to pray, Lord, give them a heart attack. You know, that's not very godly, is it? But uh, so this is how they prayed back then. We don't necessarily want to model it. But it says they prayed, make creditors seize his entire estate and strangers take all that he's earned. Let nobody be kind to him. Let nobody pity his fatherless children. May all his offspring die. That's pretty heavy-duty prayer, isn't it? May his family name be blotted out in a single generation. May the Lord never forget the sins of his fathers, and may his mother's sins never be erased from the record. May the Lord always remember these sins, and may his name disappear from human me memory, because he refused all kindness to others. He persecuted the poor and needy, and he hounded the brokenhearted to death. Well, if nothing else, we can read this and learn some of the things we shouldn't do. We shouldn't persecute the poor and needy, right? We ought to help the poor and the needy. And we shouldn't refuse kindness to people. We ought to give kindness to people. Amen. And uh, don't hound the brokenhearted to death. Encourage the brokenhearted. Amen. And so it says he loved to curse others. Don't curse others. Bless others, right? And so at any rate, though, so he says they, they prayed. He loved to curse others. Now you curse him. Uh, he never blessed others. Now you don't bless him. Cursings as natural to him as his clothing, or the water that he drinks, or the rich food that he eats. And we shouldn't be naive. There are people like this that are really just foul, filthy, evil people. And uh, God help them. God help them to repent. God help them to turn. Now may his curses return and cling to him like clothing. May they be tied around him like a belt. May those curses become the Lord's punishment for my accusers who speak evil of me. May this be the Lord's payment to my accusers, 
to those who speak evil of me. In other words, they have done this. They've accused me. They've been wicked towards me. Now may the curses they've spoken against me turn around and curse them. May they receive what they sow. The Bible says, don't be deceived. God's not mocked. Whatever a man plants, he's going to also reap sooner or later. So be careful about the seeds you plant in this world because those seeds will grow up. So he said, but Lord, deal well with me, O sovereign Lord, for the sake of your own reputation. And I like that. He didn't say because I'm so wonderful. He said, Lord, because of your reputation. Lord, I tell people that I belong to you. So then, Lord, help me. And then people will know that you really are that good. Deal well with me, O sovereign Lord. In fact, God just loves us. God wants to bless us. And he does get glory when people can see the blessing of the Lord that's upon us when we're living the right way. And, and they can see, wow, there's a correlation between following God and being blessed in this, in this life. Amen. It says, deal well with me, O sovereign Lord, for the sake of your own reputation. Rescue me because you're so faithful and you're so good. Because I'm poor and needy and my heart's full of pain. I'm fading like a shadow at dusk. It sounds like he's sick, doesn't it? I'm fading like a shadow at dusk. If not sick, at least sick in his heart. He says, I'm brushed off like a locust. <laughs> you ever have like a grasshopper hop up on your sleeve? You just brush him off? He says, that's how I feel. I'm just getting brushed off like a locust. My knees are weak from fasting. I'm just skin and bones. I'm a joke to people everywhere. When they see me, they shake their heads in scorn. Help me, O Lord, my God. Save me because of your unfailing love. And isn't that what we're going to depend on? God's unfailing love. Save me. Wow, not because I'm so good. Not because I'm so strong. Lord, I need you. Help me. Help me, Lord, and save me because your love never fails. Let them see that this is your doing, that you yourself have done it, Lord. And then let them curse me if they like, but you'll bless me. When they attack me, they'll be disgraced. But I, your servant, will go right on rejoicing. May my accusers be clothed with this grace. May their humiliation cover them like a cloak, but I'm going to give repeated thanks to the Lord, praising him to everyone. The King James says, I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth. Yea, I'll praise him among the multitude. Amen. Let's praise the Lord no matter what, right? Even if everybody in the whole world curses us, let's just keep praising the Lord and thanking him for his goodness to us. Love you guys. We'll get on into the book of Ezekiel now.